Alright, uh, it's upside down, but that's okay, it's 51 degrees, or sideways, because, yeah. So, my first logger, 51 degrees, set it at 50. Um, <clears throat> this is about hour 18. Pitched a nice size starter, two liter, stepped it up once, and it made a whole lot of yeast in this carboy. Um, it looks like a regular, very pretty clean head on there, and that's from uh, minimal hot break and cold break and essentially no hops and this this beer had a lot of hops in it alright Alex come on out of the way this beer had a lot of hops in it um, the way I got around that was let's see here we go was this on the inside so this is on the inside of the kettle. Um, it attaches to that. So let me just show you real quick what it would have done. Uh, let's see here. This bucket is a perfect example. So this is on the inside. Kind of like that going that way and uh, for the last 20 minutes or so and into the uh, immersion whirlpool chiller that I have um, this thing is sucking wort, hot wort in and all the hot matter and everything else and uh, through a pump and it's pushing it yeah I just used my hand but okay <laughs> it's pushing it through a recirculating arm there we go that sits in there at the bottom of this is a kettle this is not a well it's a, it's a bucket but it should be a kettle so it sits in there at the bottom and it recirculates and so that creates a whirlpool so you know they would essentially be uh, facing each other so this would be sucking in one way and then the whirlpool would come in and push it out that way so um, it would create the same thing. So basically you do that and it w cools down your work really, really fast. Jamil Zainashef, Zainashef, Jay-Z from uh, the Brewing Network, he has all this on uh, MrMulty.com, wrote a big article about it. A lot more information there than I, uh, than I have or than I'm going to tell you. Um, so anyways, you circulate it in there, like I said, 20 minutes. Uh, before the boil's over, um, and then into the uh, into the cooler or the chill cycle with the immersion chiller, and uh, you turn off the the pump for about, and you wait twenty minutes before you rack to your uh, to your carboy, and that way all that. Uh, all that whirlpooling, all that swirling, swirling around in the bottom, it'll kind of settle. And I have a keg, and it's got a, you know, it's convex, I guess, um, at the bottom. That's what I boil in. And uh, so it kind of sits flat. But if you, had a, if you had a flat bottom like this, apparently it cones up. So that uh, little arm kind of works double duty. <laughs> duty. So uh, at first, you know, he, you have it up here while you're racking to keep it away from all that stuff at the bottom. So it's kind of pointed up. This is, you know, where it would get sucked in. So you kind of have it pointed up. And as uh, your water level comes down, or your, I'm sorry, your wort level comes down, you, you slowly uh, tilt it in. And uh, that way you disturb the uh, the pile of everything that you don't want the least amount you know you only turn it when you need to so it'll only you know create turbulence 
for a very short time, and I, uh, I did this. This is literally my first logger, uh, I think the second or third time, probably the third time I've used the, uh, Whirlpool Chiller, and, uh, the first time I've used this. Okay. And there is no hops in there. I just... This had uh, 1.6 ounces of hops for bittering, uh, six gallon patch. So 1.6 uh, ounces of hops for bittering, 0.6 at 20 minutes, 0.6 at uh, 10 minutes, 0.6 at 5 minutes, and 0.6 at, z at uh, knockout, at flame out. And uh, it came out good. Hey, buddy. It came out very clean. So, and I'm using uh, the fermentation schedule. Let me uh, actually go get that. It needs to be on the fridge, anyways. Yeah, but you, you've written a pretty nice book, though. <laughs> All right. So, this is uh, Tasty's Tasty from uh, the Brewing Network. He's a, he's a friend of the Brewing Network, I, I guess, and uh, Jim Elzana chef. Um, this is his lager fermentation schedule. So I have WLP 800. Oh, and those hops were Saws hops, just in case anybody was wondering. Um, Three percent alpha acid. That's what it had. So let's see. 50, 50, 50. So 50 for three days, 52 for two days, 55 for two days, 60 for two, 70 for three. That's the diacetyl rest, which I hope I don't ha really have a problem with. Um, like I said, uh, got a lot of yeast in there. I'm pitching it cold. Um, not a lot of extra crap I don't want. I pitched it cold and I'm keeping it cold for primary and I'm raising, you know. So basically, uh, I mean, I'm going to keep an eye on it for sure. But, uh, yeah, this is the, and there's the, there you go, that's my, uh, that's what I used. The grain, that's everything, that's all the grain. So, 50% uh, distilled water, 50% tap, which I use for all my other brews. It works really well for, uh, like, uh, amber to copper style colors. So, hey, dude. <laughs> Did you just wink at me? Alright. So anyways, that's it. This is like the best investment I've probably ever made. Well, I'll probably say that about every new brewing toy. I seem to. I do really like this hobby. Alright, take care guys. Bargainfittings.com, I believe, for this one. It was on sale for seventeen fifty at first, and uh, a week later, I, I really wanted one, and I bought it for twenty five. I wish I would have. Uh, that was a hell of a deal. Anyways, uh, take care. Get yourself one of these if you don't. And yeah, happy brewing.